Hello and thank you for tuning into this Ingerati Studio interview at Asian Utility Week 2016. I'm Denise and with me I have Frederic Croissant um, and you are CEO at um, Passion. Mm -hmm. Thank you right. very much for joining us. My pleasure. So um, we're going to be covering quite a range of um, topics um, but I guess what we're going to discuss is, is basically your company's involvement or development of dynamic line rating um, and um, yeah for the TND system so I think let, let's maybe make that our first question um, so your company is obviously developing DLR systems for the um, transmission and distribution system um, why should utilities be considering this let's start off with that question well the, the general train and the main drivers that utilities yeah. observe when deciding to go for D DLR is basically a need for flexibility uh, um, the main driver behind that is really renewables emergence and with, we're seeing that in Europe, in the US and we're starting to see it in, in Asia as well with the amount of renewables, particularly wind farms, increasing drastically. We have countries now we have, which have at times 100% renewable energy flowing in their grid. That creates a lot of new um, uh, contingencies in the grid, yeah. new constraints, new bottlenecks, which tend to move around uh, geographically and also in time. All of that means that the general paradigm on which the grid was built 50 years ago, because most of the grids were built uh, after the Second World War, have to be completely rethought. Yeah. Because we come from a world with very static and predictable power plants and very predictable consumers, yeah. and now all of that has completely changed, which means that the current flows on the grid are becoming much more random than they were, and utilities are looking for solutions to bring flexibility to the grid. So that's the main driver why DLR is required by utilities. And it's one of the few answers they have to reduce their capex to manage their investment better. Yeah. Um, you know, the Asian region is quite huge, but um, um, what, what areas in Asia have the greatest need um, you know, for these systems? And where does your company's interest lie in, you know, in, in particular? Well, the, 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 two, the two usual suspects yeah. are uh, of prime interest to us, China and India. Uh, for obvious reasons, uh, because their load keeps increasing quite significantly, and also because, and that's relatively new, because now they are starting to integrate much more renewable on their grid. And they are starting to see the same problems that their European peers or American peers so starting seeing uh, five years ago. But it's, it's even worse in their case because they're combining two problems. The fact that their load keeps increasing, that has been doing for a number of years yeah. and the emergence of renewables and China in particular which has very very ambitious uh, targets in terms of uh, wind farm integration is going to face these kind of issues uh, same issues just worse that for example Ireland or Denmark or Portugal so a few years ago yes. same thing for India at least some states of India which uh, are deep, starting to deploy uh, wind farms and to some extent to, to a lesser extent PV as well and the rest of the regions, uh, countries like here, for example, in Thailand, we are seeing more the, uh, the, the fact that the load increase across the board starts to create problem. And the fact that these, these customers, these utilities, need to readjust their capex uh, uh, budgets in order to uh, prioritize their investment, and DLR is one of the, one of the solutions. Yeah. Um, I, you know, um, the region obviously has, a, has very unique challenges that it needs to overcome. Um, what can Asia, or specifically maybe countries in Asia, learn from countries um, in Europe, for instance, or in the States? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the, the fact that uh, flows, load flows are becoming much more random is something that we're just beginning to see, or that our customers are just beginning to see in, in Asia. And it took uh, Europeans and Americans a good five years to learn how to cope with it. And I think uh, if Asia could benefit from what happened five years ago in Europe, that could really accelerate their learning curve and uh, save them a lot of time and trouble in order not to redo the mistakes that their European yeah. peers did. Yeah. Um, so I think the, the fact that Asia is only starting now to really integrate a lot of renewables, actually give, put them in a better solution, in a better position because the solutions already exist, they've been tested, 
have right. been deployed to some scale, which they won't need to uh, to uh, learn again and to yeah. go through the same learning curve. Yeah. Okay. The, the um, equipment that is used here, is it quite different from what you would use anywhere else or is it exactly the same um, no, solution? No, it's, it's, it's exactly the same. Right. It's better says with a few uh, tweaks here and there, but it is, it's one standard solution which we can deploy globally. And uh, easy to integrate into systems. Yes. Yeah. We right. put a lot of, uh, of emphasis on that. We, uh, you know, with the first systems we deployed, there were we, we claim they were easy to install, but our customers still complain that it required a lot of training, a lot of operator skills, which we solved uh, over the last uh, three to five years. We've worked a lot on the software aspects as well, on the training aspects, to make them really, really easy to use. And now we have complete uh, toolboxes, which we can really come and deploy and uh, integrate quite easily in pretty much any uh, utility system, right. regardless of the SCADA or the MSD. Okay, all right. Um, what are the major changes that Asia's energy sector is probably is likely to face, and, and how does your company intend to contribute towards these changes? Mm -hmm. Well, I already mentioned uh, renewables yeah. integration. That's a, that's an obvious mm -hmm. one. The other the other big change that is happening to various degrees in the region and in, depending on the countries is uh, deregulation and the fact yeah. that uh, you know we are countries are to various degrees again uh, unbundling their transmission generation and retail that creates a lot of new challenges and lots of uh, of new uh, the questions that uh, utilities will have to uh, learn to answer and in particular the fact that uh, transmission operators in many countries now are uh, independent entities regulated entities we are confronting with new challenges, and I'm thinking here of Titan, for example. I had this discussion with uh, EGET a uh, no little than this afternoon. Yeah. They will have to uh, act as independent entities to optimize their own part of the value chain and discover new solutions and find new solutions for that deal of being one of them. Right. Okay. That's clearly one of the issues or one of the challenges that uh, a lot of Asian customers will have to uh, solve. Okay. Um, uh, my final question: What would be your um, advice um, to Asia's utilities or the energy sector as a whole? It's a very ambitious question, <laughs> but uh, I think if I if I go back in time and, and, and go through the process that uh, European and American utilities went through, and to some extent are still going through, uh, I think. There's a lot of value in sharing experience across countries. Right. What we saw, unfortunately, in a lot of European countries and in the US between states is that each utility wants to reinvent the wheel, to yeah. test their own solution, to go through their own learning curve again. If Asian utilities could cooperate better, share experience, share their knowledge base, that would really facilitate the adoption of new technologies across the continent and uh, and save them a lot of time and money because these technologies exist they're, they're proven it's really a matter of now of getting comfortable with them and there's no need to again go through the same mistake go through the same process learning process when the uh, country next door has already done so so experience sharing to me is a is a, is a very significant importance. Right, sound advice. I'm going to end there. Frederick, thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Thank you. And to our viewers, thank you so much for tuning into this session. If you're wanting more insight into Asia Utility Week, uh, please have a look at our playlist, which is on our website, ngerati.com. Thank you.